Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, good afternoon. Thank you for coming on today. Good afternoon. Well, stocks on Wall Street were down overnight, especially tech and some of the big growth names. Uh, the Nasdaq off by more than 1%. On the Dow, the decline was not so big. Uh, investors looking to that U.S. jobs uh, report coming out. Tell us what was behind the decline on Thursday and take us through the global markets. Yes, Dow fell about uh, 0.07%. Actually, it did recover quite nicely towards the end of the session. But S&P 500 lost about 0.36%. And particularly the growth index, NASDAQ, was down by more than 1%. Uh, clearly, the news is that the U.S. economy is uh, growing fast, that inflation pressure is actually uh, amounting. And if you look at the ADP reports, it showed that U.S. company added the most jobs in 11 months, and also initial claims uh, for joblessness uh, fell below 400,000 uh, for the first time. Uh, it actually came out at uh, 385,000. And also the service PMI number came in uh, at stronger than expected, uh, both on the ISM and market kit. Uh, showed uh, basically the record expansion in the service sector. Uh, due to this, we have seen the 10-year government bond rate uh, rising sharply to well above 1.6%. And also, if you look at the inflationary pressure numbers like CRB index, the um, commodity index, it actually is up uh, by more than 22%. 23% year to date, uh, and it has hit uh, well above 220 uh, index level. So all in all, uh, people are concerned about the possible inflationary pressure affecting the interest rate to rise further, tapering coming in faster than expected. All that has resulted into the correction of U.S. market, particularly growth names. Uh, in terms of the other market, uh, it seems to be doing reasonably okay despite the uh, U.S. dollar uh, appreciating, um, and the emerging market seems to be reasonably okay. Uh, all in all, though, uh, continuously the concern is on the interest rate and inflation. Right, that's been a concern, of course, here in Korea, too. Stocks uh, started out uh, quite a bit lower today, too, but by the end of the session, the Kospi and the Constack had recovered uh, most of that. Uh, today, retail investors uh, were buyers and uh, institutions turned to selling. What's the story in the domestic market? Right, if you look at the uh, overall investors, um, the trend, the foreign investors are a continued buyer of the market. Uh, they bought about $161.6 billion. And as you said, the retail investors bought about $471 billion, uh, which is exact opposite of what they did yesterday. Uh, though, however, in institutional investors are the major seller of the Korean market. However, uh, if you look at the market trend, it did go down quite significantly by around 10 a.m., uh, but did recover quite nicely in the afternoon, and cost actually was down by only 0.23%, and cost was down by only 0.26%. Uh, most of the uh, names, such as the automakers, the also semiconductor, um, and most of the export-oriented companies, uh, they did go down in terms of share prices. However, though, it did recover from the day's low. Uh, all in all, if you look at the uh, Korea's overall bond interest rate, uh, it is up uh, also. Um, it is affected by the 10-year uh, government bond rate of the U.S. Uh, and if you look at Korea, it is very sensitive to the global economic recovery. Uh, and if you look at the trace data, it's showing a very sharp increase in May. Uh, it's uh, exports showing significantly higher by 45.6% year on year, and where the imports grew by uh, at a slower pace, but still, nevertheless, it was up by about 37.9%. Uh, clearly, the Korean economy is recovering very nicely, and it is very uh, economic growth sensitive, and global economy recovering is affecting positively to the Korean market. Well, Mr. Yu, let's look at the uh, exchange rate for a minute. A week ago, the won was about as strong as it's been uh, in a few months against the dollar. Now it's come back up again, the rate, to around uh, 1116. What's caused the dollar to gain strength again? And what's your outlook in terms of currencies? 
Right. If you look at the dollar index, uh, it has actually has risen quite uh, significantly from below 90 level to now about 90.6. Uh, clearly, it is trading at three weeks highs after the upbeat labor market data and also service market data. Uh, and it is showing that uh, there is a possibility that the Fed will start tapering sooner rather than later. Uh, as I said earlier, ADP reports the job added the most in 11 months. The initial job claims fell more than expected. Uh, service PMI is showing very significant number. All that is resulting into clearer picture of of the labor market recovery. If the labor market recovers and economic recovery is coming through, then obviously U.S. dollar is not going to depreciate further. It has depreciated quite significantly in the last about year or so, from well above $100 level to now uh, around 90 level. Uh, we think that in the future it might side trade uh, in the future, uh, and that affects kind of similarly to the Korean won exchange rate. Uh, today, Korean won has risen slightly by about 0 0.5. It is showing 11.15 uh, won to U.S. dollar. Uh, we think that the trend should remain at where it is. Uh, it's not going to appreciate much or uh, depreciate much. We think that somewhere between 1100 to 1150 would be the range bound for Korean won. Uh, and that is quite significant uh, positive news per se in terms of the export as well as the Korean economic recovery phase. Uh, we don't think that the exchange rate is going to affect negatively uh, for export or the import or the economic growth rate in the future. Uh, we think that the Korean economy is in a right track and that the structure of the economy is reasonable. Only concern is though uh, consumer debt level. However, though interest rate remaining very low, we don't think that that will affect the Korean one to depreciate much. We just think that it was probably box range chain, uh, trading. Well, finally, looking at uh, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin is back up from last month's uh, low, but it's nowhere near the high we saw earlier in the spring. And the Biden administration is said to be looking at strengthening its response against cybercrime, much of which, of course, is done uh, to get Bitcoin, like these ransomware attacks we've seen. Uh, briefly, Mr. Yu, what do you see happening in the crypto space? Yes, in terms of the crypto space, I think it's going to be, continue to be very volatile. Uh, it did go up to, for the Bitcoin, it did go up to about 3,900 territories. But now today, it's back down by more than 5%. It is down to 3,600 uh, level. Uh, clearly, the volatility remains high because of the a lot of news that the uh, money laundering is actually happening through the Bitcoin, and the government is going to continuously very heavily regulating this uh, currency sector. And also, if you look at the overall cryptocurrency, uh, the supply, it's not just going to be the Bitcoin. It's going to be very um, many of these uh, cryptocurrencies, and the supply level is almost 300 percent year on year. That is a very, very strong number. And if that's the case, then the currency's uh, individual uh, value is not going to go up higher because of the ample supply that you are seeing. In the past, the Bitcoins were rising rapidly because of the level of supply is very, very low, even lower than the supply of gold. But now, if you look at the overall cryptocurrency supply, it's so much, and also government is regulating heavily. So we don't think the price is going to go anywhere in the future. Interesting that uh, supply would come back into the equation uh, so much like that. All right, Mr. Yu, we'll have to leave it there for today. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too.